overall, I think we had about 12 hours of cutting time. So having a machine that isn't as capable as the alt mill and doubling that time, well, it would make for a quite long project. It's definitely a uh, thank the alt mill for being able to do it so fast. So I'm Mike. Officially, I'm one of the QA engineers here at CNC Labs. We were looking for a project that would resonate well with our current community that we have. And a guitar is a project that is not for beginners by any means for the long mill, but also a project that is somewhat common to do. So we figured what better way to step up our current projects that we have and make a guitar out of full aluminum. And because it would take a lot of machining to do such a project, it would be heavy to have a full aluminum guitar. It'd be, we figured it'd be a perfect project to test the overall capabilities and stiffness of the machine. When the blank came in, it weighed 10 and a half kilos, so about 32 pounds, I think. And then when it was finished and done, it weighed five and a half kilos. So in the end, it weighs 12 pounds, and we've taken about 23 pounds of aluminum, I think, off of the original weight. A lot of aluminum turned into chips. The main goal was to reduce the weight of the guitar. Because like I said, a, a full thickness guitar would be pretty heavy and too big to be able to play on comfortably. So the main goal was to remove weight and lighten up the guitar. But we also needed to make it aesthetically pleasing and nice to hold so that when you do play it, it was comfortable to hold and felt like a normal wooden guitar. Yeah, so for this project, we used a 2.2 kilowatt spindle. We found that the machine itself was actually not the limit, but more the spindle. When we started taking faster and faster cuts and going deeper and deeper, the spindle was actually our bottleneck. We were slowing, we were bogging down the spindle and we had to reduce our speeds so that the spindle wouldn't fault out on us. So it'll be interesting to see with this new bigger three and a half kilowatt spindle, what kind of uh, chips we could make with that one. Because that'll be, I think, a whole new ball game as well. First, we started with a two inch thick aluminum blank that we got water jet cut here locally. Um, we got them to cut it in the rough shape of a guitar, plus having a bit of extra meat around it so that we could clean up the outside edges and if any mistakes were to happen, well, we'd have a bit more room for error. From that, we milled a MDF pocket in the bed of the machine so that we could roughly reference where the positioning of the guitar was. Um, from there, we milled out some locating holes at the bottom of the, the blank of aluminum. Oh, I'm so crooked. Some locating and some threaded holes so that we can make a fixture plate out of aluminum on the bed and mount our aluminum blank from the underside so that we had access to the whole top of the blank to be able to cut without interference of clamps or fixturing or anything like that. And because it's an odd shape, it is hard to clamp down from the sides. Our only option would be from the top really, but then you'd lose the ability to machine the whole top face at once. So once we had those locating holes and mounted the machine, we started with the bottom side of the guitar. We milled all our pockets, all our finishing paths, and did a rough contour. And in the pockets, we integrated some more dowel holes, some more locating, locating holes to put pins in, and some more thread holes. We flipped the guitar blank over, machined the top side, did a nice finishing pass, and that was it. We're all very impressed with the capabilities of the machine. Like I said, seeing chips come off of the machine at the depths of cut that it could take and the speed that it could move. A different ball game than what we're used to usually. And I think as far as machines are available on the hobby market, such as this one, this is a big step up and can do things that other machines I don't think could even touch. A project like this with having so many pockets and so, many so much material being removed, I think if it wasn't being done with an alt mill, it would not really be feasible in the realm of you know, time constraints and bit constraints because you'd probably bit a lot, break a lot of bits. 
but um, having the alt mill being able to take so much material so fast or removing so much material so fast really made this project possible. The highlights of the cutting was definitely all the roughing pockets when it first ramped down into the, especially the first couple pockets that we did, that got us quite nervous. Um, we had done tests before so we knew that it could take such deep cuts and at such speeds but doing it for 12 hours was a big question mark on whether it would survive and the machine didn't seem to really break a sweat. Um, it was also nerve-wracking because a lot of it was, you know, trial and error as we go along. Trying out different feeds and different speeds on your finished project part, especially when you don't want to buy another big piece of aluminum like that, definitely had us um, nervous as far as trying, but it turned out very good in the end. Well, I think the, the impressive part is how fast we were cutting. Doing our fairly deep pockets and our deep contours, I think our maximum cut speed was about 56, 5700 millimeters per minute, and that was in a cut of 10 millimeters deep and often taking three quarter to one millimeter step over cuts. So a very, what I would say, a fairly impressive cut. And to move at that speed, nearly 6,000 millimeters a minute, it was impressive to watch the machine go. When we first started using the machine too, not only was the cutting capabilities of the machine impressive, but also the rapids. When you just jog the machine or you press start on your program and you see the machine just wrap it over to the other side of the, the workpiece, you really had to make sure that you knew where the machine was going to go and confident in your program because it didn't leave you much time to react. So if you're trying to look at machines that are capable of carving aluminum, this is one of the better platform platforms out there for the price, I'd say, obviously. Um, as far as tips and tricks, definitely coolant. If you, a couple times we ran out of coolant, then you could immediately tell based on how it sounded and how the chips were coming off. Um, coolant and air blasting to keep all the chips out of the holes, especially we were doing some deep pockets and with such big chips and such high feed rate, there was definitely a lot of chip packing up in the holes and getting stuck. So air blast, chip coolant, very important. And then, yeah, I don't know how feasible it is to constantly make such large projects on such a machine, but if you're looking at making signs, smaller signs, thinner plate, definitely a viable option for it. It was a big learning curve for all of us, especially when you look at feeds and speeds, RPMs, making sure that we're not moving too fast or too slow for the cutter, making sure that we're not rubbing and overheating and breaking end mills. Now that we have that knowledge base of how the machine will react to certain types of cuts, how to program our cam to better optimize what we have with the machine, I think further projects now will be so much easier because we kind of removed that guessing game from the programming. We didn't really know what to expect, especially being the first large project like this for the machine. It was really a test bench for what was possible, but I think it blew us all out of the water with how great the surface finish was, how overall relatively quick it managed to machine the whole part. Um, yeah, and how little mistakes, especially on the machine side, that there was. There was no serious headaches running the machine, and it turned out Pretty great at the end. Yeah. At least for myself, I was quite pleased with how it turned out.